Today, I am watching Read Think Review, RTR, for life. That was a little bit of their If Writing Was A Person video, which I will link to below and you should go and subscribe to them because they're a fairly new channel and need a bit of love. And because this is my Q&A video, I'm assuming a fair amount of people are going to watch it. So now there is no excuse for people to not click through and hit the subscribe button. I'm also, as you can see, I am wearing a branded t-shirt. Also, shout out to Todd the Librarian. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am doing my Q&A video. So, I asked you guys to ask me some questions to celebrate hitting 1500 subscribers. Which, by the way, at the time of filming this, I'm on 1550. So, we might be doing this again very soon, who knows. But, um, yeah, I asked you guys to ask me some questions, you responded, and so today, I am going to answer those questions. I'll also, I'm going to link below to all of the different YouTube channels uh, of the people who ask these questions. So if you want like a shout out video or something like that, here's your shout out video because there are going to be links galore to all of these wonderful people who uh, who asked me some very thoughtful questions. So, And by the way, I should point out as well, I kind of read the questions when they submitted them, but I haven't prepared answers or anything like that. I'm literally, I've got, I've copied and pasted them into a, into a text document. Not even a Word document, it's a text document in, in Microsoft Notepad here. But um, yeah, we're going to go through and I will read out the questions and then try to answer them. Do you like how I, I even drink Slytherin beer? Question one from Rachel's Reading Corner. She said, nah, congratulations on 1.5k. I'm sure you'll be doing another video like this for 2k soon. You've been talking about Stephen King recently and I was wondering what are your favourite books by him? Jesus Christ, okay, well we'll start with a nice easy question, shall we? Probably The Stand has got to be up there, the the expanded version of The Stand. I'd go and get it, but actually Becca's asleep in the bedroom through there, so I can't go and access my books very easily, but it's probably The Stand. Why? Just because it's just so epic in, like, it's just such an ambitious book, and not only is it ambitious, but it kind of executed on that ambition as well. On top of that, the, the whole Dark Tower series, I really enjoyed the Dark Tower series. The Shining, I never really got on with The Shining. I preferred Doctor Sleep to The Shining. I actually quite like things like uh, Different Seasons and Four Past Midnight. Actually, well, Four Past Midnight, one of my favourite Stephen King stories ever is The Langoliers, which is the first story in Four Past Midnight. And that's like a six out of five. And then the rest of the book was like a 3.5 out of 5 at best. So so the actual entire book isn't necessarily worth reading. But uh, The Langoliers, the, the novella, I suppose you'd call it. Oh, uh, 11.22.63. That was a definite 5 out of 5. I know a lot of people don't, like Todd, I'm looking at you here, don't like King's later work. But that was just such a good book. Like, again, a really ambitious book that he did well. All right, anyway. Question number two, Jasmine's Reads. She's got two questions, so let's go with question 2.1. If you could mash two books together, what would they be? I think one of them would have to be Northern Lights, also known as The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, because it's like my favourite book. But then I do, I kind of want to mash, mash up that with It by Stephen King, going back to Rachel's question. Because how good would that be? Like a combination between this sort of... I don't know, I, I, almost like YA adventure, I guess you'd call it. It's like an adventure at heart, basically. And uh, <laughs> and then mixed with it. Plus, as well, if you look at the themes of it, which is very much about, like, as an adult going back to confront your childhood almost, I think that would be perfect for me to have a mixture between my favourite book as a kid and then Stephen King just messing with my head. Question 2.2. If you were arrested and couldn't give an explanation as to why, what would your friends think you had done? Uh, <laughs> this would be one of two things. It would probably be like drunk in public or uh, possession of a controlled substance, probably. You did ask. This is from Miriam from Between Lines and Life. And this has got two. No, this has got three. All right, question 3.1. Favorite food? It would be pizza. Specifically, probably a vegetarian hot pizza. Question 3.2. Favorite place you visited? Can be a whole country or a specific location. That would be Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I've been there three or four times now. It's like my favorite city in the world. I, I would actually quite like to live there, but um, money. It's expensive to live there. And question 3.3. If you could time travel, where would you go in time and place? I'm going to give a punchline here from an episode of Red Dwarf, and that would be, I would go to uh, Dallas 1963, stand behind the grassy knoll and shout, duck. Question number four. 
This is from A Wondering Mind. Congrats on 1.5k, Dane. I've always been curious if authors have a favourite book they've written or if they love them all the same. I don't know if this is like asking what's your favourite child, haha, <laughs> but what's the favourite book you've written? Um, well, actually, I I think if I had children, I would definitely have a favourite child and it would probably be to the detriment of the other children's health, but... Uh, I mean, my favourite book is generally the most recent book that I've released, so it's probably Driven, because it's my most recent. I don't know, when I first started out, I think my first three books, we had No Rest for the Wicked, uh, which was, uh, you know, supernatural thriller. Then we had Eyes Like Lighthouses When the Boats Come Home, which was poetry. And then we had Formally, which is basically about the rise and fall of a social network. And I used to say it was like mind, body and soul. So, you know, the poetry book was the soul. Uh, the mind was probably No Rest for the Wicked. And then Body was Formally, because I was just writing that about my day-to-day -day life and <laughs> the, the job I did, I suppose. Question number five. Richardson reads, congratulations on 1.5. Question, what bookish travel destination would top your list and why? This is going to make him pleased because I think my answer might be Brattle Bookshop in Boston. And I was thinking about this, right? Because I know that uh, Steve Donahue has been there a bunch of times as well. And, uh, you know, it's just this kind of iconic bookshop, I guess. But actually, I have a client who is based in Boston who we're like literally we're trying to arrange a time to call at the moment because I'm doing more and more work for them to the point at which they probably make up like 30 to 40 percent of my freelance work at the moment. And um, one thing I want to try and do more is to actually go and visit some of my clients. So there's another one in New York who, you know, over the last year I've done like $5,000 worth of work for or whatever. So it actually works out now that I can kind of justify going to New York to meet up with him for a few days on my business account because it's an investment in the future of that client, you know. And so I was thinking in bed last night, weirdly enough, of this client in Boston being like, I could go and visit them. And if I was, if I was visiting them, I could go to Brattle Bookshop. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, that's my answer for that one, I guess. Question number six, basking in books. Congratulations, Dane! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. What is your first memory and have you ever read a book that really evokes the feeling of that memory? This may be an odd question, but hey, okay. Um, well, my first memory, and this is a weird one because I never know whether my first memory is my first memory or whether I've just been told this story so many times by my family that it is my first memory and that they've like implanted it in my head. But apparently it was when I was about three years old and my granddad left his walking stick on the beach. We were in uh, Exmouth, I believe, because my great grandma used to live there. And she died when I was about 10 or 11. She did live to 96. She did well. I think the reason I remember it is because it was this like baking hot day. And we've been on the beach all day. And I don't like beaches. I don't like sand or anything like that. And I assume I didn't even when I was three or whatever. And we finally left. And we'd been walking for about a mile. And then he realised he'd left his walking stick on the beach. So he had to, we had to go all the way back to try and find it. And we did find it. And I distinctly remember walking through this like indoor covered market bit to get there as well. As to whether any book that I've read has ever evoked that memory, it's a pretty specific memory. So, so I, I don't think so, no. Question number seven. This is Matilda Gothica. She says, congratulations, Dane. I wanted to ask you this since we met. Are you related to a YouTuber named Shane Dawson? I am not related to Shane Dawson. No. Um, yeah. That is that is the end of that question, really. Is he British? I was wondering this. Like, it seems like a very specific question. No, he's not even British. He's American. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll look like him. I don't know. Question number eight by graham quigley graham hurry up and get your camera fixed because i miss your videos y y come back he said if you could visit any time period in history or any book setting which would you choose feel free to answer both lol the 1960s i think late late 50s early 60s i've always felt as though that's where i should have been you know coming of age i think i should have been born in like 1948 or something so by by you know i had my late teens early 20s in the 60s so i think that's where i would go as for any uh, bookish related setting i would go to the world of philip pullman's his dark materials so that i could see what my demon is i'm pretty sure it'd be a little wolf question number nine which is muhammad kelfi and he asked uh, which writer do you like the most for his or her writing style which would probably be Charles Bukowski because 
what I always say about Bukowski's work is that he gets r these really kind of complicated situations and feelings, etc. He communicates them all very well through very simple language. And I don't know, he makes it look effortless. Part two of Mohammed's questions, if you had a demon, what would it be? Well, I think I just answered this one by accident, Mohammed, but I think it would be a wolf. Or at the very least, maybe Biggie's my demon, who knows? Question number 10 from Melissa and Lindsay, specifically from Melissa, and, and she said, which character do you feel like you've connected with most? There are a lot of characters to choose from. I'm going to have a beer, drink, sip while I think about this. I don't know. I can't say that I ever have particularly connected with a the character. They've always not... You know what I mean? They don't feel like a representation of myself. They feel like friends of mine that maybe have things in common with me. Three, two, one, go. I'm, I'm trying to think. Who, who have I connected with the most? At the moment, weirdly, I'm connecting with uh, Maxim de Winter from uh, Daphne de Maurier's Rebecca. Look, I'm this far in so far. I know, I know what happens in this story. Apparently, well, actually, as if as if it wasn't bad enough that I already basically knew the gist of the story. There's an introductory essay which I read because they put it as an introduction that literally tells you exactly what happens. So, no surprises left in this book. And I know that Maxim de Winter is not a nice guy, but he does remind me of me in some of the ways that he acts and thinks, which is really bad. Question number 11, Nora Linda. What is your favorite video that you have made? I'm gonna say the punk rock tag because that was a lot of fun and also a fair few people watched it and whatnot. There's my Latvia video blog, which in hindsight, it annoys me because there's too much uh, reverb on my like voiceover of it but I mean I, it was it was fun to go but it was more fun to go than to make the video afterwards if that makes sense and also just a few spoken word things which I haven't yet released because I didn't know if people would be interested but now I kind of know they are but I don't know upload schedules and stuff it's a nightmare question number 11 Joe Smith in which country would you live in if it wasn't the UK and why Again, going back to the fact that I would love to live in Amsterdam, I'd love to live in Amsterdam, and so Holland, actually, from all the Dutch people that I've met have been very nice as well. I'd maybe like to live in America, I don't think I'd like to live in America for my entire life though, I'd do it for like five years or something, but let's be honest, I'm not going to get a visa anytime soon anyway. Question number 12, Catalyst Reads. How much does star ratings influence slash play a factor or role into your decision to pick up books to add to your TBR? Easy question for me. They pay absolutely no, they have no influence whatsoever. I don't even tend to check out other people's reviews. Question number 13 from Madeline Swan. What's the weirdest book you've ever read? That is definitely a Madeline Swan kind of question as well. I think it's going to be Hindu Sex Aliens by Larry Weiner. And there is a review I did of this I'll link to below. It just broke every rule going. Like, eventually, the the author himself was a character, and you saw him having counselling sessions with, like, a psychiatrist or whatever, talking about the book and how he didn't know what direction it was going to take. Meanwhile, I mean, Hindu sex aliens are very literal. There are some Hindu sex aliens. It was just fucking bizarre. I loved it. It was great. Books are a way of life. She said, Congratulations, Dane. If you could have dinner with any character, who would you choose? I think it would be Miley O'Hara from Driven, which is my book. I think it would be fun to go for dinner with her. And also, she's like really socially inept, and so am I. So, actually, no, ha we would have some like pretty cool conversations about like just tech and stuff. We'd be sitting there talking about like VR and 3D printing and how big data and machine learning are going to revolutionize healthcare until every single person's healthcare medical record is all in one big system that we use to derive kind of insights about global population health so we can predict when there are going to be for example famines or diseases spreading and we can take action ahead of time and we can give people personalized healthcare based on their own you know their own healthcare profile and other people People to them so instead of just being like oh well you're 50 years old you're at risk of a heart attack because other people at 50 years old are also at risk of a heart attack it will take into consideration the fact that well actually you're running some marathons and you're pretty fit there if anything what you should be worried about is this kind of one little bit of DNA in your DNA structure that means you could develop this disease so we're gonna head off this disease by doing this right now instead and it's gonna save the whole healthcare system billions and billions of dollars every day so we'd Probably, yeah, probably Miley O'Hara. I think we'd have a good, we'd have some nachos and talk about that. All right, a question from Jellicle. I hope I am not too late to comment. You're not. 
My questions for you are, one, you read so much, make a lot of videos, watch videos, when do you have time to write? Do you keep any particular schedule for writing? Is there a certain type of day you prefer for writing? That sort of thing. Um, I just work from when I wake up to when I go to sleep and so sometimes it's my freelance work and I'm working for clients, sometimes I'm doing videos, sometimes I'm writing my book, sometimes I'm reading. I just pack as much as I can into the day. I suppose I do use a specific schedule which I call the schedule which is very OCD basically I work in 45 minute blocks and each 45 minutes I'll have 15 minutes of writing 15 minutes of tidying and 15 minutes of computer stuff which will be you know answering emails or even editing books falls under that and whatnot and actually I have been finding that Angela Hart from uh, Books of My Heart, her uh, words on the page-a-thons are really helping. So once every three months or so, it's like a 24-hour uh, write-a-thon and I've been doing about 10K words for each of those. And that then buys me time throughout the rest of that three month period, I guess. Question two from Jellicle. Which of your books would you most recommend to a new reader and why? I guess going back to what I said earlier, I would say Driven because it's my most recent and also it's the first book in a series and book two is hopefully coming out later this year so you know you want to be kept up to date with that okay bubbly bookend my question is what is the weirdest food combination that you really enjoy i actually don't really do food combinations for example if if i had like you know veg and a vegetarian pie and some chips or something i generally eat the veg then the chips, then the pie or something. I eat things separately. I can't think of a weird combination. So we're going to go eggs and vinegar here and say pickled eggs. This is a question from Anthony Andrews. He says, can you read the first poem you wrote? Yes and no. Um, the first poem I ever remember really writing was at school and it was about the Balrog in uh, Lord of the Rings. And all I can remember from it was this line where it was like, uh, Goblin killer Durin's bane the orcs fear the Balrog's name or something like that. It was all about the Mines of Moria. I can't remember the full thing of that, but what I can do is I can do the first poem in my poetry collection, Eyes Like Lighthouses When the Boats Come Home. It's called Idiom, and it's kind of full of in-jokes. A lot of this was actually, uh, it's kind of a poem I wrote for an ex-colleague of mine because we both hated where we worked. Anyway, Idiom. She has a rugged carapace and the redundancies of superlatives and the intractabilities of serendipity, stifled by the latency of others and entombed by the holy ziggurat with a penchant for disorderly madness, broken with a kick from the dipstick. Her name is a dirty rhombus, the number plate of a Nissan Leaf or a pinwheel in the sky, the clement climate of a small constituency bringing the lingo back from bingo and the irony of the ironing and the juggler of the juggler and the seasoning of the spring. Falling in love is a bore lake, cause when you you find someone to have and to hold don't trade them for silver don't trade them for gold they will always inevitably leave you leaving no one else in the world who's quite like them sometimes the world is so delicious the world is the word is the world there we go and final question crying about books she asked are you an ocean person or a space person i am terrified of both of those things basically space is terrifying and one day the sun's going to explode and humanity's fucked so yeah there's that as for the ocean i don't like that either i don't like i, I am a solid ground person <laughs> i don't i don't even like going outside <laughs> question number two do you want any more animals yes but we can't really fit them in this flat unfortunately the oh i should give you an update here we're not going to be able to move to that cottage that was in the uh video asking for questions for this because basically we're, we're just stuck living here now until march we're tied into this contract that we weren't quite aware of so yeah we're stuck here until march so that means yeah we we don't have anywhere bigger so we can't get any more animals but if we were to move to somewhere like that in the countryside the, the goal would be to get chickens maybe a dog maybe a rabbit and possibly a second cat but uh yeah in the meantime biggie is biggie is more 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 than good enough you know and final question is your girlfriend going to make a youtube channel i haven't asked her this but i'm pretty sure the answer is no <laughs> um yeah i mean we're both quite introverted but you know it, I just don't think it's her thing. She does watch a lot of YouTube, primarily things like uh, PewDiePie. She watches she watches like Doctor Pimple Popper and stuff. So there's all that, but I don't know. I, I don't think she knows how to edit videos or have any real desire to. So 
on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you have any follow-up questions. I guess if you leave any further questions in the comments, I can always save those for the next Q&A video. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.